corn's starting to come up here. Let's check this little guy out. Let's see if I can pull him off without, um, I think we're gonna break him. Well, it's green, that's good. So I checked out some of that corn crop and uh, some of it's just starting to come up, some of it's up, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch, so. I think what you want is even emergence, but uh, some of it's just kind of coming up now, so I'm gonna check it in a day or two. Everything should technically be up out of the ground. That way we can look at it better, but uh, it was looking pretty decent. There's a couple spots where there were too close together. We did a lot of digging and we never saw that in the planter, so that'll be interesting to watch here in the next couple of days to kind of see how the planter did or how I did plant, so. So that's the scale we'll be hauling grain into. And uh, I think I can fit duels on there with the tractor. I think that'll work. A lot of people have been asking how I'm gonna go about full and plan right now is to, uh, I'm kind of starting searching uh, to buy a combine here. So I'm gonna search this summer to buy a combine and then I think uh, a couple gravity wagons and that's how we're gonna do it. Cause uh, most of my acres are one mile, yeah, one mile away from the elevator and like four miles away from the elevator. So gravity wagons is simple, no taxes, no license, no truck. That's what I'm thinking right now. They're out rolling. I think he's planting beans. We're gonna try and get the last uh, 45 acres of beans. Well, the first beans I've ever planted, but the last uh, crop that has to go on the ground here. So we got 45 acres of beans we have to plant. The people I work with for spraying was hoping they could get to it yesterday to spray this down. They couldn't get to it till today, so. He's out there spraying quick and uh, there's a lot of weeds through here. How's it going? It's going good, Gunner. Greased up, uh, that wet spot back there isn't too wet, so he should be fine. It's not too bad. And then that little acre you want to do? Yeah. That seems like stupid, but whatever. Okay, we, m we might not do that. We'll see. Could be a couple hundred bucks this year, Spence. A couple hundred dollars to do that. So we have this 45 acres of beans to plant here today. We have 13 acres of uh, B and K to spread because there's a back 13 acres that the uh, original spreader guy wasn't able to get to because it was real wet and had the wet crossing. So they brought out a spreader and we're gonna just hook that onto the tractor and spread that uh, B and K on that 13 acres here. Applicator's gonna finish up spraying back there, and then uh, I gotta run to town and grab a uh, small 1000 PTO adapter because there's uh, three types of PTOs 540, small 1000, and big 1000. We got the big 1000 on the tractor, uh, and we need the small 1000 adapter. Nope. Is that all the way? Yeah, that, yeah there's yeah, no. Good. Okay, so. It seems like it's really. Push it down? Yep, go. There you go, high up. Okay. Here's the, the CRP that you guys saw us burn probably two or three weeks ago by now. It's kind of cool. It's all coming up. Those trees aren't supposed to be growing in the CRP, but it's after May 1st. And after May 1st, we were told, and you can look it up online, that you aren't supposed to go in there and like take out the trees or kind of disturb anything because that's like habiting season for the birds and wildlife and stuff. So. In the fall, we'll try and mow all that and get that taken care of. But the reason why we have this cart is because the guy who had the big fertilizer spreader couldn't get through this wet spot. And it's not even that wet, but. It is a little wet. We want to try and get at least the tile to drain out into the CRP, CRP and then just kind of mound up and over it. Keep going, keep going. There it goes. Oh! It's spreading in a ways, it's hard to see. I was getting hit from like 20, 30 feet back. All right, we're in the back one acre. Oh God, this is... 
Is it worth it? I don't know. Land of the lost. I think the deer are probably gonna eat it all up, but hey, at least they'll eat this hopefully, and then not go to my other stuff. I got my neighbor's disc again, and uh, we're gonna take this and uh, try and level out some of the spots because this is a mess through here. The, not this, but the farm's a complete mess, so we're gonna see what we can do to kind of clean up some rough spots on the farm. Jesus, that scared me. Ooh. It's an antenna out there. After driving and after driving and uh, checking this uh, and cleaning up some of these out of waterways, if you want to call them waterways, I realized this farm is kind of a mess. Like it is, it's it is a mess. It is really rough in places. Me and Spencer are trying to make the decision: do we just no-till this tomorrow and just be done and not mess with the farm or not clean up anything else after that, or do we clean up? most of this stuff and then uh, it's supposed to rain a little bit net later next week come out and and diss this because it is rough in some spots some of this could probably be left alone but some of those other fields there there's some pretty good ruts there so I kind of just want to no-till it and just we'll save it for next fall and kind of get this farm shaped up but we'll see there's a bit of goalie from here on down there and I think we're, it's pretty deep. It kind of needs pretty deep dirt dug out of it to really make it a nice waterway. So we're gonna save that from here, from where I'm standing on, I can drive through the waterway and plant across. But from here, I can't drive through the waterway. So I think we're gonna come back in the fall and like completely take care of this and, and do it right. But for now, what Spencer's doing is an awesome patch job because there's a crazy amount of dirt built up right there where it would just go around and come on downside the waterway. So, should fix most of our problems, but we gotta get grass seed or something on there. That should be good there. I'm just hoping water, we kind of piled a lot there and I was hoping Spencer would push it out a little further here. But I think it should make its way into the ditch and funnel down through there. Right now, this is just a quick little fix. We're trying to get all these skid steer and truck and pass cleared. I don't know if a disc is gonna kind of break up this ground. I think it's gonna cause probably more compaction, but at least it won't be too rock hard. Over on this side, between the neighbors, I'm just gonna leave that and we'll just keep that little ATV kind of path along there. Okay, we're gonna try and get this planter hooked up now. I'm pumped because I think I got this working. It was just a little fix, I just didn't have something set on here. And now, through this weed mess, I should be able to see where I went. So, I'm, I'm pumped for that. So those guys are emptying out the seed and I gotta get uh, this set up for population. Cause right now, this is how some guys have it where they can like change in the cab, but I gotta change it here. So right now it's set for corn at 33,000. So for soybeans, I gotta move to a bigger sprocket here, or maybe smaller sprocket. I think it'd be the smaller sprocket here. And that way we're getting close to what we're shooting for of 140,000 uh, plants per acre. So we'll switch that sprocket over and then we'll do some quick adjustments right here. Can't go down on it. For 140,000, we gotta hit 16 and then 27 right there so we should be set and uh i feel lucky and spoiled to have a seed tender the seed salesman john he uh dropped off a seed tender so uh that's gonna make it a lot easier but i feel like i don't deserve it Run into some issues trying to set this planter. We got so much of this weed, which I'm sure guys have figured out how to kind of get around, that we're gonna set these trash whippers crazy deep 
to see if we can kind of move these out because what ends up happening, and these are some of the trash whippers set deep. Well, let's see if I can find it. All the beans just sit on top right here. Here's a couple beans. And they kind of just sit on top of the crack there. I want to try and figure this out to plant through this stuff because that'd be simple. We're just going to try doing our best and if it doesn't come up good, we'll replant it. But we're seeing to get kind of pretty good depth on them and uh, seems to be packing. So we're going to set all of them to that to see what happens. It's a good test, good learning experience. So, Well, we're going to go for it. We got, uh, it's looking decent in some spots. It's definitely not the best seed bed I'd like, but hey, I can't. I, the only other thing to do would be to wait and kind of disc this up or get somebody out here to vertical fill this up. It's soybeans, it should be fine. Well, I'm, I'm trying to stay off the rows here. This is a little weird. Those row cleaners, we got them bumped up pretty good there. When the boxes get low, those row cleaners aren't as aggressive, obviously, because there's less weight. to show Grant's crooked line here once we turn around the halfway point. Pretty crooked. Last night I had 14 acres to finish up and it was completely pitch black and I was like we're just gonna do this and so I got the planter all full and then I was like okay we're gonna have enough seed so I uh, told John uh, the pioneer guy I was like hey you can come get the tender and uh, I don't know we're probably fishing up it's like 11 and I run out of seed and I'm like how did we run out of seed so quick because it seemed like we didn't get through it that quick but man at the end there it just went down so John's bringing a couple bags of seed and uh, we're gonna finish this right here so it was supposed to rain it's supposed to rain today at like noon so I'm trying to get it done and get it in there because it's gonna rain we're supposed to get an inch or two of rain so that'll be nice we just got to finish this here I'm really interested to see how these beans come up especially in these planting conditions that we we're going into uh, literally, I'll show you guys the trench out there, but beans are dropping in the ground. They're getting probably an inch deep. Some of them are honestly getting closed down by the closing wheels. Like you can see them inside of the closing wheels because they're dropping and the closing wheels come and the closing wheels just press them into the ground a little bit. So sometimes it's perfect. Sometimes it's not that perfect in some spots in these fields. So here's what we're looking at. I'm uh, Going probably a little too aggressive with the trash whippers, but this seems to, when we had weeds, because there's a ton of weeds back in some other spots, it seemed to cut out stuff really nice. Let's see what we got here. There's some beans and they're in there. Oh yeah, there we go. That's perfect. That is perfect right there. Some of these might be yellow because I have some non treated beans here. And then there's a couple you can see that don't even make it in there. But most of these seem to be making it in there good. A couple that didn't close up because I think we went right on top of a corn root. Yeah. But at least they're, they're getting down like an inch deep. I think we're fine. right here and I think I'm actually gonna put it in a different spot I'm actually looking for like a two acre partial kind of close to a town a little bit north of most of my farms and there's a lake there on that town and so my whole thought is it, I've told you guys or I've mentioned like the first video like eventually it'd be cool to eventually buy uh, farms closer to where I grew up and uh, and actually buy like a bin site and a house on there and, and sheds and the whole farmyard and everything and uh it's kind of one of those things where you got to wait for the right opportunity to come up 
in a couple years, maybe if the right opportunity comes up, I might buy, like, if, they're, if, the, if the right guy's retiring and there's a sale happening, it could be kind of the perfect opportunity. And so I'm always kind of thinking of that in the back of my head when I buy farms and build stuff that, hey, what's the resale gonna be on this building, on this shed I'm about to put up? And I think uh, if I need to sell it, I think resale would be pretty decent if I put it in the right location. Um, for one, A, a big farmer wants to come in and buy that, or or even uh, I just hold it and rent it out for storage. Uh, since it's around town and there'd be boats and RVs and all that, and I think that's decent too, even if you just wanna hold on to that shed, even if you're not farming in the area anymore. So it's kind of the game plan. Things change so, so much. Maybe I, uh, I don't know. This is kind of a hard moment. We have to shut off the tractor for the last time for planting season here. I was looking and I bought this tractor with like 4,990 hours, something like that. And we have 5,081 hours on this. So we put roughly 90 hours on this spring. It's crazy. First plant 2021 is over.